Welcome to video by Dodge Neon Racing. Um, today we are replacing the PCV valve. Um, uh, the car has been experiencing pretty uh, rough idles. Uh, at times it likes to bog out. Um, been also having some oil consumption which uh, I've already did the a lot of the things that could cause the oil consumption um, and replaced pretty much almost the whole top end of the engine uh, so now we're doing that um, this came out with it uh, so cleaned it up got a newer gasket right here this black part that you see right here um, but I will tell you go ahead and disconnect the battery take it out and you will need a 15 16 deep socket uh, half inch drive uh, is normally what you'll need to be able to get your old one out all right <clears throat> um, a lot of the vehicles older neons had this was your PCV connection tube to your throttle body which connects right down here but a lot of times this rubber boot here but mainly the one down here in the bottom dry rots and cracks or this plastic tube will get small pinholes and cracks in it same thing up here um, and these are discontinued you can no longer get these at all I actually was able to find mine through a guy on a neon uh, parts site on Facebook but uh, the boot down here dry rotted pretty soon um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up getting some fuel line hose here um, let's see it has uh, it's a see what it's a 9.5 millimeter fuel line hose um, you can put these uh, clamps on the end here for uh, to be able to seal it up pretty good. I didn't have mine on there, but I'm going to install them now. Um, also, uh, I had to reline this vacuum to the vacuum booster that's down there because that was so full of oil. This thing weighed uh, 10 pounds, and because it was so compact with dirt and oil, um, that was one of my P. 455 codes turned out that was the problem also um, I had a leak here so I had to pretty much this used to go all the way down through here then come around into the throttle body but I made a direct shot this way definitely easier to work on and less uh, hose to try to track um, eventually I'm just gonna have straight line hoses running everything straight rubber hoses are a little bit more durable and when they get old they don't get brittle and snap um, so basically the whole thing of this video is uh, this ends up coming out with it you can tap it back in there but make sure you clean the inside of this and clean this up real good I'm gonna put a little bit of Teflon tape on it to kind of like hold it in there uh, I didn't have brake cleaner which I wouldn't recommend using brake cleaner on any of these parts uh, I just went with standard old mass airflow sensor cleaner since it's safe for the mass airflow sensor figured also it would be good to use to clean the gunk and grime and oil built up here <clears throat> When removing it, be gentle since the part is plastic, but you'll want to put this on and slowly take it off. And then once you get it loose, you can actually unscrew it with your hand and you get it off. Um, removal process is the same process as putting everything back on. Um, one of these days I'll end up having a prop that I can actually put my phone kind of here and be able to work at the same time 
of it, but I haven't I haven't found anything that doesn't hold too well. Uh, I've tried things, but they just they tip over and well beyond that point. But anyways, you'll just put this on here, and you always kind of in a sense it's going to go on something like this. Um, you always in a sense want to have your your uh, flathead screw or I believe that's a oh it's either a 6.5 or a 7 millimeter nut uh, aimed in a good location so you can get access to it tightening it, something like this will just make it difficult on you or anybody that has to work on the vehicle that's just a quick tip <clears throat> other than that I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna get my other hose lines vacuum lines clamped up because I heard a lot of hissing and stuff um, I'm going to take this off and give it a good clean with mass airflow sensor. I believe that's the idler valve. Uh, just need to get this car idling correctly um, so I can actually diagnose what's causing the misfire. Um, and there's just so many things wrong like the, the intake manifold was leaking. I had a fouled plug. Um, had to replace those plugs. Um, coil pack was bad replaced the coil pack it's just, just so on and so on uh, ha had some uh, sketchy fuel injectors replaced all those uh, got a 05 fuel injector rail put on there uh, I do notice I got crack here in my fuel line that could be causing the issue because I'm getting air into my fuel um, into my injector so it's not correctly giving the amount I don't have one of those expensive tools but this is one of those videos where I'm doing one thing that can control rough idle, which is the PCV valve and uh, vacuum lines leaking. So take care of that. Uh, and if that fixed it, then I know that was that. If not, we'll, I'll have to dive in. And uh, my next thing is to tackle this crack here in the fuel line. All right. Thank you for watching. All right. Got everything put back together. I actually shortened the hose that was here and actually put a 5 8 hose because the hose on it was really too big. Um, cleaned all my hose, the TV here, just sprayed that out and get all the gunk filled out. She's running 10 times smoother. Uh, definitely idling a whole lot better which is definitely good. Got that belt squeak. That's actually the power steering. Um, one of these days I'll fix it. It still works. Other than that, yeah, as you can see, the power steering is the next thing to work on. Um, but other than that, you know, Doing pretty good, idling good, so turns out that was my PCV leaking. Bad PCV. I mean, I've replaced so much stuff on here, and it was the PCV the whole time. Wouldn't have thought so because I just replaced that maybe 50,000 miles ago, but they are made out of plastic. They got a little ball in there, and if that, that can go bad at any time, especially anything plastic. Uh, Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.